In this lesson, I want to teach you all the great classic, the Christmas classic, something I teach my students for the baking class, the Stollen, full of gooey fruit, almond, full of flavor. I know you love it. So for my stolen dough, I'm going to make my base dough is a unrich dough. I've got eggs, milk, and butter to it. So I've got my strong batch flour. I'm going to put everything on in a bowl. My full fat milk, two large eggs, flour. Sugar, our salt, and some fresh yeast. Again, if you don't have fresh yeast, use dried yeast. If you have to, fine. I just rub my yeast a little bit on my hand with a bit of flour. Done. And some soft butter. We'll just out of the fridge for half an hour. That's all. We we'll put the mixer on now on four minutes on slow speed, and then we increase the speed to number three until the dough is completely clean on the side of the bowl. Using the dough hook. Let's make the dough. So use us four minutes to really blend your ingredients together. Recap, you've got all your ingredients in there. You haven't forgot the sugar or the yeast or something like that and then watch what's happening in your mixer. And we want everything to be blended together so you can't see any flour or eggs or anything like that. And then we increase the speed on the mixer. So while my dough is mixing slowly there, I'm gonna mix all the food together, get them ready to go into my dough. So in here, I've got some sultanas, Mixed peel, cherries, glassed cherries, flecked almond, it's been toasted a little bit, a bit of cinnamon, and of course some rum. So I'm going to blend all those food together, a dash of rum on top, blend it together, and then we'll add this to the dough when the dough is done. I'll show you that. So my fruit mixed together, a little bit of rum now, just a tiny bit, okay, not too much. Oh, sorry. Blend everything, you smell already, it smells Christmassy. Beautiful, look at this. So that's my fruit all mixed together now, infused with the rum. I'll pack it aside until my dough is done, and then we'll add it on to it, I'll show you that. It's been four minutes now, everything's together. I'm gonna increase my speed to number three, four. And then until the dough is clean on the side of the bowl. Nice and smooth and beautiful. So now my dough is ready. It's slapping on the side, it's coming clean on the side. As I slow it down, Gorgeous. So we're gonna add the fruit to this now. So I'm gonna stop the mixer, lower the bowl down, add the fruit to this now, and mix it for one minute only. Don't over mix it with it, I'll show you. So all my fruit, all the rum, the flavor coming through is incredible. Every single bit. So I'm put the bowl back up now and mix for one minute only on a very slow speed. If you go too fast, you're going to your foot. So keep an eye on it all the time. Don't over mix it. Start to finish off by hand a little bit. 
So I'm waiting for everything to gather together, and that's it. So I'm done now. I don't want to overmix it. I'm going to fish it up by hand a tiny bit. So stop, go down. Oh, it's beautiful. All those fruit. Fruit, nuts, rum. And tip everything on the table. Look at this. So it's always very tempting. I keep repeating this to over mix it in the mixer, but then it becomes very, very sticky and horrible. So you want to blend your fruit in the dough, but not squishing it too much. So you can see the fruit in here. So what I'm gonna do, again, there's always a top and bottom of my dough. So I imagine this is my top, for example. I'm gonna turn it that way, that way, and just with my hands, fold the dough onto itself, and push and fold, and push and fold. So my top is back on top, and turn that way, put all the fruit inside, and fold, and fold. Two or three times, and already it's got some strength now. Use your scraper. That's done. So it will feel a bit sticky. The rum and all the sugar from the fruit feel like that. So we're gonna put a tiny bit of flour now. Fine dusting, just to dry the top. Squeeze that extra flour underneath. But that's all you need. And fine dusting in the bowl, not too much, just a fine dusting. Get your scraper, pick it up, and in the bowl there. And then we cover it. Here we go. So my dough is resting for the stolen. So the dough is infusing with all the rum and the fruit. It's resting for a good hour, hour and a half. While it's resting, I'm gonna make some frangipane cream. Now the secret of my stolen is to add some frangipane cream inside before I put some marzipan. When I first tried my first stolen, I thought there was something good about it, but it was so dry, so boring. So I put a bit of a French ne sais quoi into it, but I did some frangipane to it. And then you see, it just gives it that gooiness and that or you just want more and more and more every time you have a slice. So to make the frangipane, it's made with a blend of butter, almond, sugar, egg, and flour. Very simple, and a touch of rum, of course. And it's made with the same quantity of sugar, almond, and butter, also called in French, temps pour temps, like for like. Um, and it's a very simple process of making it. So the first time you make it, you want to go in the right order of making it. So the trick to that is put the ingredient in the right order as you're going to use it. So the first thing I'm going to use is my butter. So I put my butter first, and then the sugar will go in next, and then my almond, then my flour, and the eggs last. So if I get them on the front of me in the right order, it will stop me making a mistake. That's something I teach in my school too. So I'm going to break my eggs first. So now I'm ready to work. So my butter, you can see, is quite stuffed. So because it's a small quantity, I can do this by hand quite easily. Um, if you do a bigger quantity, you can use a mixer and use the paddle in the mixer. So a bit of butter. And I'll show you a trick for this. Don't leave your butter on one little corner. Just spread the butter around. It'll go much faster to get it nice and light and fluffy. I'm mixing the butter until I see the soft peak appearing on the butter. Again, remember, if you, use, if you beat something up with a whisk or a spoon, try to put your legs side by side and do this. It will hurt on your back. So put one foot forward, one back, level your shoulders, and use your legs to push everything in. You can mix much longer and much more efficiently. So I'm beating my butter. You can see it's getting whiter. And look at this, little pixel. That's what I'm looking for. So I know it's soft. I'm gonna add my sugar to this now. and then work it in. Okay, so all mixed properly now, almond time. I start with half first, 
Mix it well, and then we put the other half. It's getting a bit tighter now. You can see that? You can see the texture? So we go around the bowl, press the paste around the bowl. So bring the rest of the almond. See it's all together very quickly together. So it's all together, you can see that there. I'm gonna add a flour to this now. Half. Mix it well. And the other half. So everything is together, but I need to bound everything together with an egg. And the egg will just make it like a cake mix. So eggs in, and then mix it. And then beat it up one more time. And you see with the eggs become lighter and lighter and lighter. So what I'm looking for now is the cream to hold. So a little peek onto it, like so. You can see that it's holding nicely on my spoon. That's beautiful, but it's not finished yet. I remember when I was an apprentice in the bakery, I fell in love with almond cream, frangipane. And I remember on Monday, my boss was always off. It never works. So I was working with the other boy in the bakery and I used to sneak in the fridge, big walking fridge. And there was always a big bucket of almond cream. And I sat on, inside the fridge with my hand, going round and round and licking my fingers with almond cream. I remember the big door opening. My boss was giant at the time. Looked at me and said, what the hell are you doing? And kicked my ass big time, because I was using my hand to do it. But it was so addictive. I remember that taste forever. So now to make it better, what we need is a bit of rum. Now, I'm very fond of rum, because when you add rum somewhere, it's not just a flavor you're adding is because it's made from sugar, it just brings the flavor together. So if you taste the cream now, you can taste the almond, the, I can taste the, the rawness of the eggs, the butter, everything together. But it's not like one flavor. The rum will just bring everything together and bring the flavor of the almond. I never ever use almond essence or almond extract. I think it's disgusting. Just use a bit of rum, it will bring the flavor together. So a tiny bit of rum, a few splashes. And then mix it well. So if you make an apple tart, you can put some cavados inside instead of the rum. But the rum will work with everything. So it's up to you, or cherry, or anything alcohol. Smell, I wish you could smell it. But you will when you make it. And you taste it, always taste it. That should be enough. Mm. This always takes me back to the bakery, every time, never miss. I never changed a recipe ever since, so food memories, that's delicious. Look at that, Christmas on the spoon. Cool, so our frangipan is done now. Now I'm gonna get my marzipan ready. Just need a bit of marzipan rolled into a little sausage, so it's ready before I put this in my stolen. So in here, what I've got is some little pieces of marzipan. I've got some uh, undyed ones, so it's natural color. Just that, I'm gonna score them in my hand a tiny bit and just roll them just like little sausage. So it's very simple, just that. I'm gonna place them on the front of me. So the last two. So my marzipan is ready. 
Franchi pan is ready. My dough is risen. I'm going to get it. We're going to divide the dough into six portions and make some stories. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. So you can see, that's been an hour and a half now. Really, really risen. See all those bubbles there? Beautiful. The smell is incredible. The fruit really work well with the dough there. So when you divide that dough. So I'm gonna put a tiny bit of flour on my table. Not too much, just enough to work with. I'm gonna tip the dough over. So my smooth side in here is gonna go down. Smell. I love that. Never bored of that. Beautiful. So you can make one big stolen, but it'd be massive, or two medium ones, but six nice size ones, much more cute. Tiny bit of flour. I'm just gonna fold my dough there, push it down so my top is back in here, and this one over the top. So my dough is reinforced, got some more strength now. And I know roughly it's about 220 grams each stolen. So you can do it by six pieces, but it's never right. So it's better to have them quite accurate. Far too much. Not doing well today. It's better. So that's why I don't want, like, when you divide the dough to have little bits of that, really wind me up. So I need to get better for the next one now. So I tuck this one underneath, go there, and learn from my first mistake, and got it wrong again. So turn it out, but I still got my top on top in here. I must get one word. This one must be right. Spot on. We're rolling now. Here we go. Perfect. This one felt a bit big, so a bit underneath. In here. So now we have our six stolen in here. We're we'll gonna put everything together. So I put a tiny bit of flour on my table, take my first one, and that's my top in here. So I'm gonna just flat it up, gently there with my hand, and just very gently stretching it, but not forcing the dough. I want like a kind of oval shape. And then when you got the right size, turn it over. We want the rough side up. Press it down. Like so. And then I'm gonna put a bit of a Frangipane cream, again, don't be too greedy. If you put too much, it will seep out. You want this to keep your stolen nice and moist inside. So I put a bit of cream inside, rub it in. And then take two pieces of marzipan and press one on the top in here and the other one in here. And now we need to seal them. So what I'm doing there, I'm gonna fold this inside in here, right over the marzipan and push it into the seam on the middle with your finger. Then travel around and then turn around and fold this one over, right over, like so. You can see there what's happened. Fold in here, seal, same on this side in here. So it's all sealed in. And that's the first stolen. So I'm gonna put this one here. I'm gonna put them on the tray in a minute. So press, turn around, press again, gentle stretch. Get your frangipan, tablespoon, and push into the your dough. Marzipan, press, 
press and fold over the marzipan. See with your fingers, like a spine on the middle. Turn around, square it up, fold over into your spine again. Check the end bit. If it's open, just close it down there and then seal the edge together. That's it. So I'm going to get my tray now and put them on trays. So I line the tray with a bit of a baking parchment and then place a stolen on each one. So don't cram them on a tray. You could put three, but I think give more of a breathing space. It's much better. And then they're gonna proof for about an hour, an hour and a half. We'll see what they like. And then we bake them, we glaze them first, and then we bake them about 180 degrees. So I'm gonna cover them with a cloth and put them to proof now. My stolen have been proving on the top of my cooker uh, for about an hour now. It's quite warm in my kitchen, so keep an eye on them when you prove them. Don't, don't just go by time, just judge also. So let's have a look at them. You can see there, still bouncy, just under double in size. So I'm gonna put some egg wash on top. So remember the egg wash, whole eggs burned with a bit of salt, so it's nice and fluid, you've got that beautiful dark orange color in here. Nice and fluid. Very good. I'm gonna do two thin layers on each one. Cover everything. So it's a quick tip when you egg wash, don't put your jug in here and do this. You end up with egg everywhere. So I always carry my jug with me. So you're very close to where you work. You save a lot of time. Done. So we'll put this in the oven now, 180 degrees. So not too hot because it's sweet. So it's caramelized very quickly in the oven. So I'll stir it now in there. The smell is already going to the air. So 180, not too hot your oven. And it should take about 18, 20 minutes, but keep an eyes on your oven. Don't assume, always keep an eyes. Okay, after five, 10 minutes, check, see where you are. If you've got hot spot in your oven, swap the tray around, okay? Don't assume, so keep your nose in. So for my stolen, to keep it moist and give you that nice characteristic on the crust outside, we need to bath the stolen when they cool down in a butter bath. I mean, there's no other word for it. A lot of butter, a good dash of rum in there, soak it into it, and then we go roll it nice in sugar. And then we're gonna wrap it properly after that. So while they're baking, I'm gonna get all this ready. So I'm gonna take this onto the stove and melt it and add some rum. OK, 
Okay, the first one. Oh, look at this. The smell in the kitchen. Baked perfect. Oh, it's so exciting. One more minute. The last two, a couple more minutes and we'll be there. You can see, look how beautiful that is. And all my filling is trapped properly inside. So we seal them properly. There's no leakage anywhere. Tiny bit in here, but that's nice. I love those little bits in here. You eat them while you finish them off. Perfect. So I'm getting my butter ready also now. Melting away. We shouldn't be long. So the last two are ready now. Oh yes, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Very impressed, no leakage at all. Oh, always exciting to make stolen. Always exciting. So I need to cool them down now. Butter's bubbling away, rum is ready. Life don't get better. So my stolen have cooled down now. So they're just ready for the little bath of butter and rum. So I'm gonna get the butter now, it's bubbling away. And let's do it. Yes, perfect. Seasoning away. You can see my butter there. What I need in there is a little bit of rum. Wow, a few drops. Smell of butter and rum. Mm. Now, if you've got some leftover, you can pass it through a sieve and freeze it for the next time. It does keep very well. But you need enough butter, enough rum to really soak into it. it doesn't work with just a brush, as you'll see. The fun begins now. So I take my stolen and buff it. That's very simple. That's really hot, but part of the game, and then in a little sugar. Cover it everywhere. I'm back on try. Repeat with the other one. So be careful with hot butter. You can use a spatula underneath if you want to. A lot of sugar as well. Everywhere. So it's a good time when you do this to have some Christmas music going on, a few friends around. But also keep cover for yourself. It's a great gift for Christmas. Make six of them. Give one away, eat five. Sounds good. And also they freeze very well. I'll show you how to rub them so you can freeze them. So we've always got some. There, we're done. So I'm gonna clear up now. You have my table nice and clean. I'm gonna wrap them up for you and show you how to do this. So of course, the best time at Christmas is presents. So I always, always care when I wrap my stolen to, when I, every time I wrap them, I know I'm gonna offer it to somebody. And so home wrapping of it, it's just something, it's not just a piece of bread you give to somebody, it's something you put your heart into it and there's so much going on to it. So make sure you wrap it properly and then you please somebody with it. So let me show you the way to do it. So I use some wax paper in here. I put my stone on the middle. I got three layers of paper. And a glass of wine. You need a glass of wine. It's Christmas. Indulgent. 
I do a fold in here, fold the corners and under there. And this keeps my stirring nice and moist. Then I've got some grease proof paper. I do the same. Push the corner in, nice and tight, go under, and like so. So if you just for home, you can keep them like that in your freezer, and they're perfectly fine like that. If you offer, offer them to somebody, we're gonna make them a bit better. I got some white pepper, wrapping pepper. And then some red and white butcher string to scream Christmas, very simply. Go over the top, underneath, cross over. I've never been very good at Christmas wrapping, but that's not too bad. Little nuts. Here we go. Very simple, but that's shout Christmas to you. And this is a nice gift to give to somebody. Also, you can freeze it like that if you want to. You can warm it up in the oven with a wrapper. It's absolutely fine. So you keep nice and moist inside. So I'm gonna wrap a bit more. See, I need a glass of wine first. Let's go. So, all wrapped up now. It does feel like Christmas. All you need to find now is some friend to share it with or just eat all by yourself. But I hope you enjoyed it. Merry Christmas. Enjoy your student.